we magnify your name. All of earth, all of heaven, make a joyful noise. Send up a praise, no other name. Greater than Jesus, we lift your name up. Name, say all. We lift your name. Come on, sing that again. Say all of earth, all of heaven. All of heaven, make a joyful noise. Sing about praise, no other name. We lift your name. Come on, help me say. Jesus, we 
Good morning, good morning, good morning, God's guard. Hallelujah. We give God praise, glory, and honor on this morning. We thank God for Jesus on this morning. Hallelujah. We thank God that we lift up, we're able to lift up his name on this morning. Uh, Because this is definitely the season, this is the hour that we definitely have a reason to lift him up on this morning. Um, The song said, every knee shall bow at the mention of his name. Hallelujah. Anybody grateful for Jesus on this morning? Um, Anybody say, Jesus, Jesus on this morning. If you need him on this morning, I dare you to call his name Jesus on this morning. Hallelujah. 
we thank God for the opportunity to be able to call his name on this morning. Because we know that when we call his name, something has to happen. Um, change has to occur when we call the name of Jesus. Um, anybody love that name? I see you, Stephanie. I see you. Hallelujah. We, she's calling on the name of Jesus. Um, and anybody grateful for Jesus on today, even as we're getting ready to embark upon Resurrection Weekend, we thank God, hallelujah, for Jesus and all that he represents, all of the power that his name alone holds. We thank God that there's freedom in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. And all we have to cry out is Jesus. Jesus, 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 my God. And I thank God for that name on this morning the power and the authority that we have to be able to use his name, hallelujah, whenever we are facing trials and tribulations. So we give God honor, praise, and glory for Jesus, hallelujah. That's it. I'm grateful on today for Jesus. That's it. I'm grateful for Jesus, hallelujah, on this morning. We give God praise and honor for another Thursday to be before each and every one of you leading in prayer. Um, I give God praise and honor for our leader of the guard, Prophetess Chantel, um, and I thank God for the anointing that is on her life. Amen. She's an anointed woman of God, and we give God praise and honor for such a leader as she is and all that he has entrusted in her to be able to pour out into not just the guard, but at the body at large. So let's remember to keep her covered in prayer. Remember to keep her family covered in prayer as well. I bless God for my husband, amen, uh, for being with me once again. He is my biggest supporter. And guess what? I'm his biggest supporter as well. I thank God for the way that we are able to support one another genuinely. And he's with me every Thursday. So I give God honor and praise for my husband. I love and appreciate him dearly. Amen. I love you, babes, as well. Amen. Hallelujah. I praise God for each and every one of you once again for being on that tune in Thursday after Thursday, week after week. I thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. You don't have to tune in, but I thank God that you do. Um, amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for each and every one of you. Now, as you're tuning in, you do us a favor and become a global evangelist, would you go ahead and hit that share button, hit that ping button, ping somebody on Clubhouse, um, tag somebody on YouTube and Facebook. I believe we're on Instagram as well, if I'm not mistaken, we are. Um, but just go ahead and invite someone to join us so that they can tune in for a time of prayer and a time of encouragement. Amen. Y'all know we become global evangelists when we hit the share button and invite others in. Um, let's go ahead and begin to pray together. I don't plan on being long on this morning. I do have a word of encouragement on this morning that the Lord has impressed upon my heart from what we have been experiencing. So, but let's, before we go into the word, let's begin to pray together. Amen. Begin to type in the comments, adoration of praise unto our Father. We already spoke about this being resurrection uh, weekend. Hallelujah. We're celebrating his resurrection, the most sacred time of our faith on this weekend. So let's begin to honor the Father for this sacred time that we are in. It's a time of reflection. It's a time to give God praise for what happened on Calvary. Hallelujah. Is anybody grateful for Jesus on this morning? Hallelujah. I love the song that Dr. Blair selected talking about Jesus because everything, hallelujah, is about Jesus. Hallelujah. And it's not just for this week, but every day, hallelujah, we have a reason to be grateful and to reflect on what he did for Calvary. We're grateful for salvation on this morning. Uh, yes, Lord, we're grateful for Calvary. We're grateful for what happened on the cross. We adore you, Father. We're grateful for who you are. Hallelujah. We seek your heart on this morning. Uh, yes, Lord, as we are reflecting, as we are thinking of what Jesus did for us, God, we're seeking your heart and how we can make it more than just a story, a story.
story that we re that we read and remind ourselves of what he did. Uh, but God, we thank you that we're able to reflect. We're able to learn lessons from the cross to make it relevant. Ah, uh, yes, Lord, for us on today in 2024, we thank you, God, for what happened. Hallelujah. We would not be here if it wasn't for Calvary. So we thank you what everything represents on this week. We give you glory. We thank you for the sacrifice that was made. There was no greater love. Hallelujah. The love that was shown back then, God, it still dwells in the earth realm on today. And for that, God, we tell you thank you. It's an unconditional love. We tell you thank you on today for how you love us unconditionally in spite of us, oh God. Hallelujah. That you sent your only begotten son to die for us in our place. And God, for that, we give you glory. Ah, yes, Lord. We give you honor for that. Hallelujah. Because that power that saved back then is still saving today. Ah, yes, Lord. And we thank you, Father. Hallelujah. That resurrection power, you not only left it on the cross, but God, hallelujah, we thank you that it resides on the inside of us. God, we thank you on today for the power and the authority that you give to us on today. We thank you for Jesus and his faithfulness, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You've been so faithful to us. You made provision for us, oh God. And God, for that, we tell you thank you. We thank you for the mercy that was shown towards us as he got on that cross, as he got up from the grave. We tell you thank you for the grace that was given to us and bestowed upon us, God. Hallelujah. Even though you know we were still sin, even though you knew we were still disobey, even though you knew, hallelujah, that we would bring reproach and shame to your name. God, we tell you, thank you that you remain faithful on the cross. Hallelujah. That you remain faithful to your love for us, oh God. Ah, yes, Lord, so we tell you, thank you. We're grateful on this morning for the ultimate sacrifice, hallelujah, the sacrifice that we could have never done, sacrifice that we were not worthy to become for the price that was paid for us, God. We could not pay that price. God, we tell you, thank you. Ah, yes, Lord, that he endured the cross. We tell you, thank you that he didn't come down. Ah, yes, Lord, he did not come down. We tell you, thank you that he got up from the grave. Yes, Lord. Not only did he get up, but God, we tell you, thank you that he got up from the grave with all power in his hands. Power to heal. Power to deliver. Power to set free. And we thank you, God, that we are recipients of that power. We thank you for all that he endured. Ah, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you for all that he endured. We thank you for access on today. Thank you for the power to overcome anything that we're facing. We tell you that we're grateful on this morning. We tell you that we love you. It's in Jesus' name, hallelujah. That's it, Lady, Lady Takara. You are alive and well. All power is in you. Our God is not dead. He is alive, hallelujah. Jesus is sitting on the right hand of the Father. So we thank him on this morning for the position that he is in. Hallelujah. For the position that he took as a humble servant to come into the earth realm for you and I. We tell him thank you. We tell him thank you that three days later, after they killed him, hallelujah, he got up from the grave. And we thank him that our God is not dead. He is alive. And we thank him for the power that he has given to each and every one of us. Hallelujah. On yesterday, um, prophetess did her good, good teaching, um, her good, good praying on yesterday. She talked about the miracle of when, my God, today. And I don't know about you, but that stirred something up on the inside of me. Um, it took me to a time of reflection. Um, they teach us and we've been studying in our church we, we even taught on it on last night in bible study as we've been studying holy week uh, not just knowing what happened on good friday and resurrection sunday but just the week in the days leading up to his resurrection 
we talked about it and how we can make that relevant to each and every one of us um, in today's time and on yesterday if you missed prophetess teaching go back and watch the replay on yesterday the miracle of when i promise you it'll revive you it will refresh your tired and your overwhelmed souls it'll refresh your un your um tired and overwhelmed spirit go back and watch that replay um, because some of us on yesterday, we identified as being overwhelmed. We felt as if we were feeling dry on the inside. We identified um, as having the wind knocked out of us. Um, some of us identified as feeling tired. Um, and some of us feel, um, identified as needing a fresh wind as we needed restoration back to us. And how many of us know that we go through moments of this time after time? We have mountain high experiences, and then we have valley low experiences. Life continues to go back and forth. It continues to go up and down. Um, but wherever you're identifying with, wherever the connection is with you and where you are, um, if you need a fresh wind, we know who we can go to. We need the breath of God to revive us and to restore us. And as I said earlier, it took me to that time of reflection as we are dealing with Holy Week. And it had me reflect, the Lord had me reflect on the suffering of Jesus, what he endured on that cross, what he endured the days prior to getting on the cross, what he endured before he rose from the grave, the suffering that he had to endure. And many a times we have to endure and suffer and go through times. And those times can cause us to lose focus. It can cause us to become distracted from our purpose. Um, sometimes it causes us to almost want to quit and throw in the towel. It causes us to sometimes want to sit on the sidelines and just allow life to go on. Um, but throughout the day, as I was working, I kept reflecting on this season. I kept reflecting on the crucifixion and the resurrection. And I began to reflect on the agony, my God, that Jesus endured. That's what this week is about. This is what we are observing. We're observing all that he did, the agony that he suffered, the overwhelmingness, the tiredness that he endured, the persecution that he endured. And not only did he endure it, but he knew what was to come. He did it knowing what was going to happen. He endured. He chose to get up on that cross. He chose to be beaten. He chose to be whipped. He chose to be ridiculed. He chose to be mocked. He chose to be, uh, to be betrayed. He chose all of those things. And he chose it for you and I. His focus was not on what he was enduring. His focus was not on the pain that he was enduring, the suffering that he was enduring, the ridicule, hallelujah, the beatings that he was enduring. That's not what his focus was. But while he was suffering, while he was going through, his focus was on you and me. My God, thank you, Lord. His focus was on God. Because he was perfect, because he was omniscient, he knew all that was to come, and he still chose to go through with it. Many of us are like Job. Job endured a lot of suffering as well. One, when we think about suffering in the Bible times, Job was one who also suffered a great deal. But Job was not omniscient. He didn't know why he was going through what he went through. And at times as he was going through, Job even wished that he had never been born. That's it, Lady Takara. He was persistent and focused on the assignment. And sometimes when the storms of life come before us, when the trials of life come before us, we have a tendency at times to take our focus off of the purpose. 
of why we are here, why we have to suffer. We take our focus off of it and we put our focus on what it is that we are facing. Because sometimes we don't have a clue as to why we're going through what it is that we're going through. But Jesus, because he was God, because he was omniscient, he knew everything. There was nothing that he was not aware of. And he still chose to go through with it, even without complaining. At times that weight became so heavy that he acknowledged the heaviness of it. But he said, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. If it was left up to his human will, guess what? He probably would have come down. But because of his focus, he said, Lord, let your will be done in my life. I'm going to endure and persevere because of you, Father God, because of everyone that I'm dying on this cross for, every sin that I have to bury, every sin that I have to carry, hallelujah, the purpose of why I had to come was to die instead of them, to die in their place, because they couldn't have done it. So he knew that he had to become the ultimate sacrifice. He knew when he would go through his most challenging times. He knew the who, the what, the where, the when, and the why. And he still persevered on. He still chose. And that right there is something to reflect on this week, on this weekend. As we are singing praises, as we are worshiping him, let's think about the fact that he did it, not just for those that were with him back then, but he did it for you and he did it for me. He did it for us. We didn't have the power to do it, but he did it for us. He had the ability to focus on the eternal reward that would come from his suffering. Ah, yes, Lord. That there would be a reward, an eternal reward, not a temporary re reward, but an eternal reward would come from him continuing on and doing the cross and not succumbing to the suffering and the pain, not giving up. So he had the supernatural ability to stay focused. And that's what we're going to talk about on today. Because many of us, under the sound of my voice, as we admitted on yesterday, many of us are going through. Many of us have been at the point where we felt like, Lord, if you don't breathe on me, I might just die right here. Maybe not a physical death, but a spiritual death, an emotional death, because of the weights that we are carrying, because of the trials that we are facing. So today we're going to talk about the miracle of focus. That when you're tired, when you're weak, when you're down, that even though it's very hard, even though it's challenging, that we've got to be able to tap into the supernatural ability to focus on God and not our condition, not our situation. The world will have us to focus on our conditions and our situations. But the spirit, that same spirit that was in Jesus, would tell us to focus on God and to focus on others. When Jesus was on that cross, he knew that if he didn't die, we would die. So his focus was on us. He knew that he had to do it in the strength and the power of the Lord and 
the focus of the will of the Lord that eternally there will be a reward for him. And right now he's sitting at the right hand of the Father because he endured the suffering. That's not always easy to do. As we know, Jesus, he had his moments. He even cried out, Lord, why hast thou forsaken me? And at times, many of us have said that same prayer. Lord, why hast thou forsaken me? We feel as if God has forsaken us. And if Jesus felt the pain of the world, the suffering of the world, how much more are we going to experience it and feel it? And it's nowhere near the weight of what he carried on Calvary. But it's still heavy for us. If we just be honest, it's not easy to stay focused. Can we be honest? Y'all know I'm very transparent. We just miss the mark sometimes. Many times I've been guilty of focusing more on my problems, my conditions, and my situations than I have been focused on God. I've been guilty of making my problems and my situation as an idol that was bigger than God. I made it bigger than who God was. And I know I'm not the only one. Even if no one on the line will admit it. I have a witness in the Bible. I spoke of Job earlier. He had no clue why he was going through. He had friends in his ear talk, telling him all kinds of lies that it was because of his sin. It wasn't because of his sin. Sometimes it is because of sin that we do suffer, that we do go through. But sometimes it's not because of sin. Sometimes it's because the Lord has allowed it. Why? To strengthen us, to make us better. We become better because of suffering. We get closer to God because of our suffering. So as I was reflecting on yesterday, the Lord had me reflect on the season that we're in and the suffering of Jesus. As many of us were admitting that we are going through, that we need a fresh wind from the Lord to revive us, that this ain't the first time that we've gone through, but there'll be plenty of times. There have already been plenty of times, and there will continue to be times when we will go through suffering. So what is God saying to us on the day? That as we are reflecting, we're praying to him and asking him that, Lord, if you put it before me, I choose to endure it. Why? Because you're working it for my good. That from my suffering, you will get the glory. From the suffering of Jesus, millions, hundreds of millions, trillions are getting given God the glory because of what Jesus did on that cross. Because of his suffering, God is being glorified. And even in our suffering, even as we are going through, we can still focus and give God glory and praise and honor. Why? Because we know our suffering will not be forever. But there's an eternity that awaits you. There's an eternity that awaits me. And my God, it tells me that there's a place where there'll be no more suffering. There's a place where there'll be no more tears. Where there'll be no more pain. My God, today, if I can focus on that, Get my focus somehow off the temporary. It's going to happen where the temporary is going to be before us. It's going to be our reality. Suffering was the reality of Jesus. But somehow he was able to put the focus on others. He put it on you and me and every other person in this world. And he put it on God. 
And that's what the miracle of focus helps us to do. It helps us to get our attention off of what it is that we're facing and get our attention on God. It helps us to get our focus on helping others. That as we suffer, there's somebody else that may be suffering with the same thing that we're suffering with. And guess what? I can help them overcome it. Why? Because I'm going to overcome it. The one who can rescue us, the one who can revive us, the one who can blow a fresh wind in our direction, the one who can help us every time we feel tired, every time we feel overwhelmed, every time we feel like throwing in the towel, every time we feel frustrated, every time we feel battered, every time we feel abused, he is the one that can blow a fresh wind in our direction. And that's why we got to stay focused on him. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. And I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. And it says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance. We talked about Jesus enduring the cross. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. The race that he has set before us does come with suffering. So the race that has been set before us, verse number two, it says, we do this. How do we do it? By keeping our eyes on Jesus. We're talking about focus on this morning. The champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. Ah, yes, Lord. That's it, Lady Takara. We keep our eyes on Jesus who perfects our faith. It's him who perfects our faith that allows us to stay focused on him. The miracle of focus. That's what helps to keep us from throwing in the towel, keeping our eyes, keeping our focus on Jesus and what he did for us on the cross. And not just what he did on the cross, but how he did it on the cross. My God, today, hey, yes, Lord, how he did it. He stayed focused as he was suffering. So when life gets to lifey, we must focus the way Jesus focused. And again, if we be honest and transparent, we're not Jesus. <laughs> we're not perfect. We're not without sin. So it does become challenging to stay focused when there's all hell breaking loose around you. When you feel so weak that you feel like you don't even want to get up out of bed. You don't want to even open the blinds. Depression seems to want to have you bound. You don't want to get up and face what lies before you. The problem ain't going to go away, but you don't want to face it. I don't want to face it at times. But that's it, Lady Sarah. We got to look to Jesus as the author and the finisher. That what he began, he finished it. That same power that as we enter something, we can overcome it, we can finish it, and we'll finish it with the same victory that he finished it with. So again, it's not that it's necessarily easy. Jesus, when he talks about what he endured, it wasn't easy for him. So no, it's not going to be easy for us. 
At times it's going to be hard to keep our eternal perspective when the temporary, the trials that we face and that we see and that we're currently enduring seem so overwhelming. It's hard to have an eternal perspective saying about our future, spending eternity in heaven when we're struggling right here and today. It's hard. I admit that. I go through that at times. Some of us are in the midst of family stresses, stresses on our jobs, stresses of this world, looking at the political arena. My God, that alone will stress you out. Looking at the infrastructure of our um, systems in this world, our bridges, our um, roadways, and all those things. We're praying for the people in Baltimore. That was a tragedy. And it brought it to home because my husband and I, we travel up and down 95 all the time to go to my home state of New Jersey. We go to the inner harbor of Baltimore. We've gone there several times. So we've crossed that bridge. And to see it crumble like toothpick, toothpicks shows you that there are real stresses in this world. When we look at racism and the unfair treatment of our, um, our, br our brothers and sisters of color. We look at all of that going on in the world, and it doesn't seem as if it's getting better. It seems as if it's getting worse. With all of these stresses that we face, stresses in the churches, backbiting, fighting, tearing down one another in the body of Christ, when we look at all of the stresses that we deal with, with disease and sickness. When we look at the stresses of not having enough, not enough resources, our finances are in, in disarray. When we look at the stresses of losing someone, bereaving, grief, my God, there's stress all around us. And these burdens can seem very heavy. They can seem unsurmountable. And when that happens, the first notion that we have is to lean onto our own understanding, to try and fix the problems ourselves. But that's the time that we got to go to the author and the finisher, the one who knows our beginning from our end. That's the time to focus on him, to focus on our purpose. It's all part of his plan. The race that God has set before us. Each one of us are running our own race. Each one of us have our own problems. Each one of us have our own victories. We have our own successes. Our own triumphs. Our own trials. The race that was given to us. But we've got to run it focused on the end result, the end goal, the purpose. And that purpose is for us to love others and to love God, to focus on that love. Love is what caused him to sacrifice all that he did. Love. When we focus on those things. We focus on Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Not focusing on the problems. Not focusing on us that we can fix it. Because we don't have the authority to fix it in our own power. We don't have no power. The song told us earlier, the power is in Jesus. There's power in his name. We get our power to overcome from him. And can I tell you, everybody can't focus the right way. It takes maturity to be able to focus in the midst of adversity. It takes a mature person. Can I tell you, I wasn't always focused all the time because I was immature. But the more I grow, the more I study, the more I fast, the more I pray, the more I praise, hallelujah, the more I worship, the more I learn how to keep my focus on him, even in the midst of adversity. 
So the miracle of focus, it helps us to embrace the resistance and to push through the messiness of life. We're talking about miracles in the midst of mess. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. This is my last scripture. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 4 and 18. And I'm almost done. And it says, so we don't, again, this is from the New Living Translation, 2 Corinthians 4 and 18. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Talking about focus. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone. My God today. But the things we cannot see will last forever. So somehow we've got to have the miracle of focus to be able to take our eyes off the temporal and put it on the eternity. Ah, God. Hallelujah. If all we see is what we see, then we don't see all there is to be seen. There's more to be seen than what our natural eyes can see. Again, we don't close our eyes to the reality of what it is that we face. Why? Because it's real. It is our reality. We are enduring suffering. We do get tired at times. We do get overwhelmed at times. But when those times come, we kick in the focus, the miracle of focus, so that we can see beyond our natural and we can tap in to the supernatural and begin to see our eternity. That we can see the unseen realities that await us. The miracle of focus supersedes the natural. And by superseding the natural, it gives us the ability to handle the struggles of this life. Why? Because those struggles are temporary. But there's an eternal glory that awaits us with no more struggling. Again, there's no more tears, no more suffering, no more pain, no more death. And Jesus knew this. That's why he chose to endure it. Because that love that he has for you and I, it kept him focused on the end result. So as we're focusing, how do we do that? First, we got to look within. We got to take heed to what's going on. Yes, we acknowledge that we're going through. We acknowledge the feelings that we're feeling on the inside. But then we give those feelings to the Father. That's it. Focus on the finish. We give those feelings to the Father, and when we're focusing on what's in, we're focusing on what's within us, those emotions that we got to put under subjection to the Holy Spirit, that lets us know that we need God. We need to have a relationship with him because he is the one that will give us the strength to overcome. He's the one that will give us the strength to endure everything that we're facing. So we look within, knowing that we need the Savior, the one who died for us on Calvary. We're tying it all into Resurrection Week. We're tying in the suffering. That's it, Misha. Stay focused on God because he knows what you go through. He knows. He sees and he cares. So as we look within and we see the need that we have for God, because we know we can't get through it without him, then we got to look to him. The same thing Jesus did on the cross. He looked at his suffering. He acknowledged it. That's why he said, not my will, but thine will be done. He knew what he was feeling. He acknowledged that it was heavy, that he was suffering, that he was in pain. He even hollered out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. 
He looked within. He knew what was going on. But then he also looked to the Father. Because ultimately God has the perfect plan for you. He has the perfect plan for me. That race that we talked about. It's all in his perfect plan. The good, the bad, the ugly. It's all part of his plan. All of it works together for our good. He has plans for us to prosper. Not to be harmed. But it doesn't mean that we won't be harmed. But we can place our focus, our perspective in the right area on him. So that he can lead and guide us through our sufferings and our troubles. So we look within. We look to him. And then we look ahead. <laughs> yes, Lord. Because this earth and everything in it is temporary. All the negativity. All of the evil is temporary. It's coming to an end. Because there's an eternal glory that's awaiting you. There's an eternal glory that's awaiting me. Where there will be nothing but love, joy, peace, praise. No more suffering. That's it. Jeremiah 29 and 11. I know the plans that I have for you. He knows the plans. So look within. How do you focus? Look within. Look to the Father and then look ahead. Take a moment to take your eyes off of your problems and your situations. Look within. Look to the Father and then look ahead. So as we're reflecting this week on the suffering of Jesus and the cruel death that he suffered, not for himself, not for anything that he did wrong. He was innocent, but yet he still chose to endure it for each and every one of us. That's why we praise this week. That's why we're praising on Sunday. Let's remember that he never lost his focus. It helped him to endure all that he went through. So keep reading your word when you find yourself spiritually dehydrated. Keep praying to God for the strength to stay the course when you get weak. That's it. Stretch towards the mark of the high calling. That's what we're reaching for. That's the goal. Keep fasting. Keep trusting. Keep stretching. Keep believing. There's purpose behind your pain and your frustrations. There's purpose behind it all. Just as there was for Jesus, it's for you and I as well. Amen. So as we're reflecting on this week, don't leave it just as you're reading a story. But look at all that he endured. And how can you use that witness to help you endure? Because as he suffered, we got to suffer as well. And as he reigns, we're going to reign as well. There's purpose behind it all. So we pray you've been blessed on today. Amen. As we're reflecting on this week, this holy week, this most sacred time. As you're even looking at your situations, your conditions. Know that Jesus gave us the example of how to overcome, of how to go through, of how to endure, even in the midst of it all. So we pray that something has been said to encourage you. I just came to encourage you on today. Amen. To equip you and to empower you. Amen. Even in your areas of weakness at this time. Amen. That God knows he sees all. He is the author and the finisher. It's nothing that catches him by surprise. He's aware of everything that's going on in your life. Just focus on him. Trust him and believe him. You will get through it. In Jesus' name, amen. We thank you. 
Amen. Amen. We're getting ready to head over to Clubhouse. Amen. So if you want to join us over there, if you're on Facebook and YouTube, we thank you for tuning in. Amen. Join us over on Clubhouse for the roundtable. Um, if you're not able to join us, we'll be back tomorrow morning, 3 a.m. Central Time, 4 a.m. Eastern Time, and whatever other time zone you may be in. Amen. We'll be back at our regular scheduled time on tomorrow. So we give God glory and honor for the reminder and the, um, the reminder for us to stay focused even when we're going through. Amen. Hallelujah. So we bless you. We'll see you over on Clubhouse. God bless you. Hallelujah. We give God glory. Hallelujah. We give